We are ready to begin. Okay, good to go. Thanks. Okay, we'll call our meeting to order and uh, welcome everybody to our uh, September 22nd uh, Design Advisory Panel meeting. Uh, just a reminder that we are live streamed and video recorded for the public today. And so I guess, uh, yeah. yeah, I think we'll start off with the adoption of the agenda. Everybody received their agenda. I think so. Okay. Um, and any issues with the agenda? Everything good? It's good. Okay. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? Kate and seconder Tony, all in favor? Okay. Passed. Great. And we have some uh, one set of minutes tonight from the July 28th meeting. Uh, was there any, everybody received those and any concerns about the minutes? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion to accept the minutes as presented? Uh, Kevin and seconder, uh, Kate, thank you. And all in favor? Okay, passed. Good, fast work of that. <laughs> we could move on. We have two presentations tonight. And the first one is one a fair property on Bowen Road. And Christine Mays, planner, city planner, will uh, introduce it. Go ahead, Christine. Thank you, Chair. Um, so development permit application DP-1279 is for a 1,553 square meter auto ship dealership. Um, and that includes a showroom, a dealership office and service area. So the subject property is located in an industrial mixed use area within the Diver Lake neighborhood. Um, so that's in the North Nanaimo area. And the property is surrounded by um, several automobile uh, dealerships. That's to the west, the south and the east. And that's across Bowen Road. As well, the Island Rail Corridor um, borders the North property line, and there are some commercial so shops and services across the Island Highway. Um, so currently, the subject property has an existing uh, building on the property. It is relatively flat, and it does have a gentle slope to the east. Um, it is zoned uh, Community Corridor, so that's Core 3, and is designated Mixed Use Corridor in the City Plan. Um, so the subject property falls within development permit area eight, and that's forming character as well as development permit area four, um, which is uh, through the new city plan, uh, and that's the abandoned uh, mine working hazards. Uh, so uh, for this particular uh, application, um, the general development design permit area guidelines, um, sorry, permit area design guidelines uh, were applicable and were reviewed. There are uh, several variances uh, for this particular application. It's to reduce the front yard setback um, to increase the maximum height, to permit a building that's comprised of uh, basically a, a building that isn't two full stories as required by the core three zone, reducing the required minimum landscape buffer in two areas, as well as reducing the required number of parking spaces. And I'm happy to take any questions following this, the applicant's presentation. And thank you, Madam Chair. Great, thanks. And who's presenting today? Is that you, Glenn? Okay, Glenn Hill will be presenting, so you can go ahead and share your screen anytime. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'll just uh, do a quick screen share here. Okay, everyone can see my screen. So, uh, Great. So we are uh, uh, very excited to present this project this evening. Um, we've been working hard with the uh, with the owner and uh, our integrated design team thus far, uh, consisting of um, Westmark Construction, um, McDonnell Gray Landscape uh, Consulting, and Newcastle Engineering. And uh, so um, as you see, well, this is our kind of start point. This is the, uh, the vision that our owner has is to create a, um, a significant and iconic uh, building type at the corner of Bowen and the Island Highway um, as, a, uh, uh, as a completion of the, uh, the Bowen Road auto uh, culture, so to speak, um, just to the, um, to the west of us, uh, uh, BMW and Mini are uh, are other significant A-class buildings uh, along the the highway, and uh, we are hoping that we are going to be able to um, fit elegantly in beside those buildings, and also uh, acknowledge the uh, the other kind of um, 
regeneration of the auto center buildings that are are all currently under construction. The um, the site is located at the corner, as we know. Uh, this gives you a bit of a, a bit of a, a sort of a blitz on the kind of uh, services and community um, offerings that are in and around with the uh, the mall, Country Club Mall to the north. The extension of Kenworth Road to the uh, the southeast is is actually facilitating um, the existing Mitsubishi store that was on the property has now relocated over to uh, this location. Uh, next to another dealer that um, has been open just over a year, and I believe there is a third one that is going to fill the uh, this large uh, portion of of uh, developable land with uh, with the addition of, of other um, car uh, showrooms and dealerships. Um, Toyota is under redevelopment right now, and as I mentioned, uh, Mercedes, BMW, Subaru, and Audi is a collection of buildings that sort of exemplify the uh, the kind of the modern culture of, of uh, displaying cars. Um, along Kenworth is um, a lot of the uh, the support for a number of these dealerships in that the uh, larger carriers would uh, would drop off the inventories which are get stored here and then you know based on how each operator works they would bring inventory to and from. Um, that is vastly different to the unique nature of this um, of this building. Um, so uh, we have car culture all around us and uh, a pretty uh, interesting intersection where the the mall meets the uh, meets the highway. Um, I'll give you the, so this is kind of current state of the nation. you can see the uh, the newer dealerships in the background. this is the existing building which was the home for Mitsubishi, which is now uh, moved across the road. Um, this is a view from the corner looking back into the site. You can see the BMW showroom fronting out onto the highway here with the other showrooms further back up the road. Uh, that sort of street elevation of Mini and uh, Mercedes and BMW across the front, um, our, our site located here. And then just turning our heads around to across Bowen to uh, the, uh, the Chevrolet dealership, uh, Laird Wheaton, um, on the other side of the road. And then uh, Kitty Corner, or right across the road from us, is the uh, is the vacant corner where the old gas station used to be here, and the uh, the Dairy Queen with the the mall up behind. There's a couple of other newer single story buildings that are starting to kind of uh, find themselves along the highway further down on the mall property. Um, so just zooming in a little bit onto our site, the uh, this is the location of our our building. Um, sited on the northeast corner, so we're pressing up against the corner of uh, the Island Highway on Bowen to um, to kind of take full advantage of the exposure and to uh, to set or set the stage for uh, the architectural form and character that we wanted to uh, um, explore. Uh, the site uh, is accessed from off of Bowen Road currently. Um, the plan is that uh, people would come in underneath a, uh, an arrival point uh, next to uh, the front door and the main entry into the uh, the gallery spaces. And uh, the driveway wraps around the rear with parking at the back. And uh, we've got an accessory building here. We have the service bays, uh, service um, accessed off the uh, driveway aisle at the west. This is a car elevator where, where uh, vehicles would be uh, driven in and either pulled through into the ground floor gallery or go up to the second and third floor galleries. Uh, we have a bank of parking along here with uh, charging stations. And uh, we have got some out outside amenity space for, um, for mechanics and staff should they wish to, uh, to sit outside for their lunch with some bicycle storage. Uh, there's some additional long-term and more secure bike storage in the service base at the back corner here. And uh, yeah, so any of the back of house oil pump receptacles and the garbage and recycling is tucked back in the corner as a smaller or um, uh, accessory building. Um, so we are within the core three uh, zone. It's a, it's a um, special uh, use to have uh, automotive sales within this uh, the zone designated to these particular properties. Uh, the density uh, permits a uh, 1,800 square uh, 1,800 square meter building. We're proposing something just shy of that at 1,500. Uh, lot coverage is 60%. Our proposal uh, is in at 53%. Uh, with a maximum building height of 14, we've asked for a small variance to 
facilitate elevator overruns. And, um, and uh, in addition, and worth noting that uh, there is an additional 2.5 meter setback required where road widening hasn't occurred. Um, as you know, the road at Bowen has been completed, but there is, uh, so we would, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that when we get into the, the variances. Uh, the parking requirements, there was a, a total of 50 required. We are providing 18. Uh, this is the most significant variance that we need to present to you guys tonight. Um, and uh, it comes with a, a parking study that was required to support that rationale. Um, and so just to, you know, back into the, the building proper, this is uh, to give you a quick rundown of the, the organization within the building. We would arrive in underneath a, a covered port crusher, uh, which would be essentially a valet drop off um, uh, your car and walk inside where you're greeted by reception. And the main floor gallery space is housed within a two story volume. Um, Moving through the gallery spaces, you would then walk into a uh, the ground floor of the three-story uh, car showroom. And then from that space, you could move on into a story and a half. It's about 15 feet uh, floor ceiling height in this uh, smaller gallery space with its kind of glassy corner that kind of um, pokes out towards the... Um, like towards the highway. So very glassy frontage along the highway, obviously with a double height um, gallery space along here, the uh, covered entry, and then all of the, uh, the service and uh, back and forth <coughs> operation happening on the, along the west side. Um, on the second <coughs> floor, uh, this is a, a double story, or this is a two story volume. So the car displays within a two volume our two-story volume with uh, glass frontage. Uh, on the second floor, uh, the elevator would take you out onto the second floor of the gallery. Oh, sorry, sorry, this is the second floor um, here. And then there would be office spaces uh, along here. There was um, access to a rooftop amenity space on over top of the, um, the, uh, the service base on the first floor here. And, and then on the third floor, there is, this is the top floor where the, uh, we'd have the smaller um, car gallery um, <clears throat> accessed by the elevator and the car elevator to bring the, the vehicles up for show and display. Um, on the rooftop um, of the second floor, we're proposing um, uh, housing a solar array and we'll, uh, we'll need to kind of follow up on the details of that. Um, make sure that we get the orientation correct, but uh, we are anticipating um, adding um, some solar arrays into this building um, as part of our um, incentive to uh, to kind of keep the building as efficient as possible. And then on the rooftop of the three-story gallery, we've got uh, an enclosed um, mechanical equipment uh, shrouded by a, um, a, pri a screen to, um, to kind of eliminate that um, that from view on the uh, at the street level. So uh, this just jumping into a, a vignette view. This is kind of what we're hoping. This is the ambition for the uh, the material palette. Uh, like I said, lots of glass on the three story corner, the two story volume along Bowen, and then the story and a half height that sort of falls in line with the uh, with the other buildings along uh, the west. Uh, so our material palette, um, as you can sort of see, is following the vein of a, uh, you know, a series of muted colors with, uh, with the obvious accent um, wood look uh, materials that we want to explore some of the, uh, the kind of the, the uh, port cashier areas, the areas where people are arriving and uh, uh, making them extra special, the uh, with pressed metal paneling for the main three story volume uh, this uh, panel siding, we're we're researching to try and find a an oil slick look um, uh, metal panel as an accent element. We uh, when we presented this to the owner, we said, you know, this is a this is a really kind of interesting play on on all sorts of automotive things, but um, it has an amazing array of color in it. And uh, uh, but we were going to use this as a placeholder for your branding color, and um, and we all decided that this was actually a really wonderful way to 
brand the building. So we, uh, we're hoping we can find this uh, particular material um the curtain wall obviously and then storefront glass where we have our entryways so it's a it's a sort of a collection of materials that are contrasting but still uh hang tight to the uh the sort of the natural nature of where we are geographically um the two di two-dimensional elevations kind of illustrate the uh, combination of two-story uh, uh gallery spaces with the port crochet here with the covered entry, um, the three-story tar wrapped in its uh, pressed metal panel with uh, curtain wall glass, and then the uh, the other gallery on the rear. This um, illustrates the variance on height that we're requesting. You'll notice that it's basically to uh, cover off the mechanical equipment and elevator overrun, and uh, only 0.2 of a meter, or you know. Uh, eight or ten inches of additional height required just to finish off the uh, the coping for the third story of the uh, of the showroom. Uh, this elevation would be the highway elevation, so you got the three story tar, you get the story just over one story um, element for the glass gallery here, and then the the car elevator becomes this sort of quiet iconic um, mass that sort of holds everything together on this elevation. Um, as we come around the building, to, this is facing west, so this would be facing out onto the highway. We've got some signage up here. We the, these are the, uh, the the bay doors into the service bays, and then this is the two-story volume um, that would be facing out onto Bowen. When it looks back, we've got some extra clear story glass to kind of filter some natural light into the volume. And then the uh, the southern elevation. This is the the wall of the Port Crochet. The, uh, the third story um, gallery behind and then the car elevator at the back. And this shows the uh, the outdoor amenity space over top of the service base on the, uh, on the back of the building. Um, so just to touch on some of the variances, we had asked for that uh, reduction on the 1.8 meter landscape buffer. Um, if you look here, what we're actually hoping to achieve is utilizing the so the the standard parking stall would encroach into that 1.8 meter buffer what we're hoping to do is use the wheel stop as the actual curb for the um for the asphalt or for the the hard surface for parking and give over the extra half meter where the car would uh, uh would sort of hang over the wheel stop which effectively means that we can increase the landscape buffer up to just over two meters so that's it's sort of a, it's an encroachment for the parking stall, but we're hoping that we can reverse that to uh, actually gain a bit more space for landscape. The um, the other uh, the other oh sorry the other variance is for uh, is a, a minor variance to allow access out onto the uh, the real uh, the real corridor. Uh, should should we want to bring a car out to present it out the same way that the other dealerships do? Uh, the that's the only area where we would ask for the uh, the reduction on the, on the landscape buffer. Uh, this variance just touches briefly on the 2.5 meter additional um, SRW that we'd like to uh, to, to um, um, negotiate that um, that we're not re losing site area because the uh, the road has actually been redone. Um, and then the variance on building height that I touched on sort of highlights that, that it's uh, it's mechanical spaces and elevator overruns. Uh, this diagram illustrates in in purple the the showroom areas and in yellow the what would quote unquote potentially be um, office space associated to it. Collectively, that creates the uh, the square footage uh, under the parking bylaw that defines the number of parking stalls required which is 50 and uh, through a uh, rationale with our parking study from Watt Consulting, we, um, we're hoping that we can reduce that to 18. Um, another view of the building that we, uh, as we see it finished, the port crochet, the main entryway, the main entryway into the gallery, the two-story gallery space, space with its glass front. The office space in behind would also have a glass um, curtain wall to it so that uh, any animation and activity up in office spaces up there would would be present out onto the street. Um, the obvious glass curtain wall to display these uh, these vehicles, which are 
um, highly unique. Um, this is not your everyday uh, kind of inventory gallery uh, or car showroom. It is a, um, it's, it's, you know, the name kind of speaks for itself. It's a, uh, it's a, a highly specific uh, kind of clientele and a kind of motor car or, or vehicle that would be here. Uh, most of the uh, dealings happen as uh, online, and the uh, this is a place for uh, for bringing a unique car in for pickup and uh, and display and a, a show and tell. So, uh, this is not about lots and lots of inventory turnover. It's it's about um, the sort of the unique nature of of cars, vehicles, and uh, and the, the the clientele that that seek those kinds of vehicles. Another view uh, coming as you're heading towards the intersection along the highway. This is the uh, the, the the one level uh, gallery, the three level gallery, the car tower, and uh, and then the uh, the spaces in behind. You can see a little squeaker view of the wood look soffit of that port cashier, and the uh, outdoor amenity space flanked with its landscaping treatment. Uh, this is a view looking uh, from the site out to Bowen, and uh, this is where you would uh, drive in. Uh, you would, you would, uh, your car would be valeted, and, and you would go into the gallery. If uh, you were coming to pick your car up, this would be the spot where the car would be sitting behind this water feature, illuminated place for pictures to be taken, and all that kind of fun culture stuff that goes along with um, with these unique cars. And uh, I will pass it over to uh, to Cara to just sort of follow up with some of the uh, landscape strategies. Hi, thank you. I will be brief as usual. Uh, so just overall, um, the planting uh, is definitely focused on the Bowen Road and uh, railway frontages. So we use low evergreen and flowering plants uh, with very columnar trees uh, to accent the architecture while providing visibility into the glass show spaces. Um, there would also on the ground level um, be a view in, into, the, into the garden space from inside. Um, we used a low formal boxwood hedge um, to emphasize the sh sharp clean lines of the architecture to provide structure for the landscape out there in that view. Um, there are, there's a plaza space um, on the gallery on the Bowen Road frontage where um, the show windows, um, you saw the plan there. Uh, there's, we've got interlocking pavers there, a couple of benches and a tree. On the west side of the parking area is a, bio, a planted bioswale. So uh, that was part of Glenn's discussion about widening, using the vehicle overhangs, um, which would be part of the bioswale planting. Um, the parking area in the rear is surrounded by a six foot metal picket fence that's detailed on the sheet as well. Um, and as Glenn mentioned, there's a um, amenity picnic table and bike racks in the rear parking area. We've, um, we have specified dark sky compliant parking lot lighting. Um, from our discussions early on, I think the rest of the site will be lit strategically from the building itself. And uh, the rooftop patio, which is shown on the next sheet, it's not colored, but we did provide uh, we did provide uh, planting in the little planters around the um, amenity area. Um, uh, just to talk about some of the staff comments, um, we can consider with the client and consultant team whether protection for the staff amenity area and a textured pedestrian path to it. Um, that was mentioned by city staff. Um, we, I can, we can work with the architect to see if there's some place we can put the short term, the outdoor short term bicycle parking under cover closer to the entrance. Um, I didn't actually realize this was in North Nanaimo. I apologize for that. So we can definitely, um, put in the 50% coniferous trees required for that, um, character area and the South lot line, there was comment, I uh, think on the blank wall to maybe provide some climbing plants or extending the picket fence. I think those that's probably something we could again consider with the client. Um, and there was a comment to consider adding bollard lighting in the parking areas. I think again, we'll work with the consultant team to figure out a lighting strategy for um, that rear parking area um, and the Bowen Road frontage. And I think that's it.
Oh, those are cut sheets for the site furnishings. So we were, we kind of <laughs> picked, sorry, there, I didn't know nobody ever includes them. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so the site furnishings, again, are sort of chosen to to kind of um, complement that sort of slick, slick sort of, you know, the, the glass and the style of the of the architecture. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and uh, Mark, do you want to maybe just uh, conclude with our uh, site and servicing and, and stormwater? Sure. Um Basically, in collaboration with CARA, <clears throat> we've provided storage to offset the impact of the development within that uh, bioswale along the west boundary. Um, the site is going to need a new water service, which has to come across Bowen Road. Uh, not really a development permit issue. Um, but So the main thing is the, the stormwater detention, which the details are, uh, of which the details are displayed on this sheet. And it's, it's all happening beneath the bioswale along the west boundary. <clears throat> okay. <That's pretty> much it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Well, um, that kind of concludes our our presentation of the form of character and our site design. So um, we're uh, looking forward to um, having the discussion. Great. Thanks, Glenn. Um, if you could maybe yeah, take your stop sharing your screen. And um, first of all, does any panel members have any questions for staff about this project? I don't see any. I did have one um, for Christine. I'm just wondering about the property that um, is right beside it, the rail, what they're calling the railway edge um, along the railway. I noticed that there's cars parked all over that. Um, what's the status of that property? Sure. So that is the island um, railway corridor. Mm -hmm. And so it is a, a permitted accessory use to allow for a car for vehicle displays. And so you'll see that sort of periodically along that stretch uh, up along Kenworth, those properties. Um, so um, Hyundai, uh, Galaxy Motors, uh, so on and so forth. So those guys have that ability to have a, a lease through Island Corridor Foundation. Okay. So it's, it's done through the permission of the, of the, property owner next to it uh, yeah so the island quarter foundation right okay um and i think glenn you mentioned in your presentation that you're one of the the uh, variances is to allow for a, a way to route the vehicles into that area for display so you the the owners are planning to display cars as well outside like that um yeah, I think I think um, it would be a very different scenario to the um, the BMW and the Mini um, next door in that um, these kinds of vehicles don't really land themselves to be hanging around outside. Um, it's uh, it would be uh, an opportunity to bring a couple of showcase vehicles out during business hours to have them uh, displayed. So it's it's a version of what what is being utilized with Laird Wheaton across the road and. Uh, the uh, the Gian group beside us. Right. Okay. Thanks. Um, let the panel members take over there. Maybe Kevin, you'd like to start. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you, Glenn, Karen, Mark, for your presentation. Really nice project. Um, I just have minor things more than anything. Um, I uh, first of all support all your variances. Uh, initially, I was sort of concerned about the parking variance, even though. Uh, at, the, at least for the time being, there's a lot of street parking along uh, both Kenworth Road and CNR Road where a lot of people park. Um, and I, I find that a lot of people will, uh, when they're looking for vehicles, uh, shopping for vehicles, they will uh, park at one location uh, and pretty much walk around to all the other ones around this neighborhood, including walking down to um, uh, the new ones on Kenworth Road. So I'm, I suppose support that even though it won't be part of any re recommendation. Um, you mentioned, uh, uh, I like how you uh, related uh, re in relation to siting, uh, how well the building relates to the corners and to uh, both streets, uh, which uh, works very well. Uh, uh, the access, like if, if you are gonna park vehicles on the leased area of the in and trail, uh, Glenn, um, how are you going to access the vehicles to there? Um, so that would be um, 
Do you want I me to share my screen? Sorry to interrupt, Glenn. I just I think it's probably I think we this was a little bit up in the air when we just submitted for DP. And I think they're probably because mm -hmm. they're seeing a fence and planting there. So they're like, yeah. how are you gonna get cars up right. there? Yes. So I think that was I think that was just uh something that I I feel like we need we'll definitely have to open mm -hmm. up that fence and put a gap in the planting to get access out to that. And, and, and what kind of planting? You'd have to remove planting there. Yeah, we'd have to take it, we'd have to provide a gap there to let to right. okay. to provide okay. access out there. Yeah. I and just did, would that require any variance, uh being that it's uh, is that a landscape buffer that we're talking about? It is, um, yes, there is a minimum landscape requirement for okay. that. Okay. And so th would that require a variance? Do you know? It, for the width, so whatever we would need to get a car out, I mean, I imagine we would do it as narrow as possible. Okay. Um, and yeah, that would be, I guess, because it's not considered like a boulevard crossing or anything, um, I guess it would technically be a variance to remove the planting for, to provide access out to the, out to there. Okay, thanks, Kara. Um, uh, form and character, I, I really like the form and character materials of the building. Glenn, I think you did a really good job. I like how um, uh, you have a three-story element relating to the corner, then you have a two-story element along Bowen, and a single-story element. You get different planes there. Uh, I think that works very well. I like the, uh, uh, the three-story car displays, uh, especially, I'm assuming they're going to be transparent. Um, the everything else, I, I, I think the, the, the only concern I might have is the south wall of the port Cochere. Um, mm -hmm. Two things, um, uh, Glenn, um, when I look at the width of the, the, the thickness of it, when you look at it from Bowen Road, it looks pretty, it looks thin in my opinion. I'll, I'll, I'll see what, how mm -hmm. everybody else feels about it. But um, it looks pretty thin consider considering it's kind of going up to aphasia that's thicker. And whether or not are you given any thought to that? And also, the have you given any thought to the transpar transparency of that wall? Um, city staff had some concerns about it as well. And whether or not you should look at either articulating it or maybe providing openings in it. Have you, Glenn, given any thought to that and also the thickness of the wall? Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, yeah, we definitely um, acknowledge the uh, the comment from staff. Um, uh, they we are maintaining that sort of clean line of horizontal cladding on that south facade. Um, I was kind of relying more on um, the, uh, the 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 space that we had to to landscape in behind it, and maybe let the uh, let the sort of the landscape sort of grow up over time um we do have a, a, a feature on the inside and and i think it's definitely it's yeah it, it's an area that i think we can explore a little bit further um uh, we want to maintain this sort of the um uh, the integrity of of the form and character and yes the thickness of it is is actually it may not come across so well in the drawings but the intention is that the banding across the top of the two-story element would turn and the same thickness would run down to the down to the uh, down to the ground, so it's not it's not sort of thinning itself out at the edge. It's the the band containing the two story glass would would turn vertically and become that. that piece. Great, yeah, yeah, that was my but, only but, concern but, regarding mm -hmm. that, and whether or not you can thicken up both the the front and the back of that that wall to make it look stronger. Um, mm -hmm. I'll I'll kind of defer to the rest of the panel members to see how they feel about that. Um, sure. Aside from that, uh, I really like the transparency, the, the curtain walls, the amount of glazing you have, I think, uh, these days uh, to get that feel of, of noticing what's inside the buildings. I think that will work really well. Um, uh, the, you have two garage doors that are glass doors, and then your service stalls are solid doors, correct? Currently, yes, that's yes. that's what we probably... Ed, Did you look at making those service doors glass doors to sort of match the other ones? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the uh, the the intention uh, was to disappear the doors um, to make that that sort of the back of the building a little uh, more quiet with the uh, with the car elevator being the glass one as the as it rises up to the three stories. Um, I, I think it's a it, you know it's certainly a valid uh, comment and, and a consideration to maybe think about um, opening them up or having a a panel of 
of light in there to bring some natural light into the into the car base. Yeah. Yeah, so we, I would. You know, I, I, think. I would think it would be more for providing more natural light, especially mind you, mm -hmm. the natural light's going to come in more in the the later afternoon uh, when the sun moves more around to the west. Um, I think the advantage, I guess, of leaving it is you will not see these doors from the highway. The building next door, uh, I believe it's the BMW dealership, will be blocking those doors. So I, I'm not really worried about it as much from a visual standpoint as I am for maybe providing some light into there. Um, aside from yeah. that, I like that you've added a roof patio and uh, the uh, everything else with form and character, I'm, I'm really happy with uh, the scale of it uh, works really well. Um, uh, Kara with landscape concepts, uh, I think you've done uh, very well considering, especially considering the limited palette uh, or canvas that you have to work with. Um, I think uh, what you've provided for your palette is, is good. Um, the site lighting, you've addressed that. Um, on the roof patio, you mentioned you're going to add potted uh, planters and stuff. Is that correct? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't really show up. That was such a tiny little drawing. Um, yeah, if you, if you just look on the second sheet of the package, there's planters just around the west okay. and south of the patio. They're raised okay. and they'll be planted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I really have. I think it's a very nice project. I, it's, I think it's really going to anchor, help anchor that corner along with the uh, building that's cur currently under construction, uh, uh, Kitty Corner, the medical building there. And uh, now we just need something on the old uh, or next door to Dairy Queen to finish up that corner. So, yeah, very well done, you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks. Um, Ken, would you like to weigh in? Turn on your mic. <clears throat> no, I agree with uh, most of uh, all of Kevin's comments. Uh, I like, I really like the uh, the concept. I think it's another step in the right direction compared to the uh, other buildings. I think the massic is much better, and um, I know that there are a couple of dealerships in Vancouver that have. Uh, uh, raised uh, second and third story uh, floors for displaying the sort of high-end cars, I guess. One is the Ferrari dealership that I know of. Anyways, I mm -hmm. think I like the concept that of this display. I think the, um, my concern would be, I hope you spend a lot of time on how you're going to light it, because I think it's going to be really important at night how you light the cars up and how the building uh, is lit up. And I think potentially it could be really uh, something that could be quite uh, <clears throat> uh, distinctive on that corner. And uh, people would really notice the cars if, and, and if your lighting consultant is able to really uh, emphasize how that building is light and show the transparency of that uh, three-story display area. I think that's my main concern would be that, and uh, I'm not a landscaper, so I won't comment on landscaping. Um, Any way you can minimize the column width and uh, would really help in their, your transparencies, and, and certainly the mullions on your curtain wall. The less mullions or bigger sheets of glass would help, um, but that's all part of your cost-benefit analysis, I guess. <laughs> um, yes. But anyways, yeah, I think potential, I think the potential of this building is, is really, uh, really benefit that whole area. I drive by it quite often, so it's, it's, I think you're, you have a good potential in this. And I really like the idea if you could really do a good job at night, how you light it. But to me, that's a, could be a really distinctive feature of your, building. That's about it. So I'll pass it on. Thanks again. Um, Angela. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you to the presenters. Appreciate uh, the work that's gone into this so far. It's a pretty lovely project. Um, it's a uh, I like the, I really like the form and the character of the building. Um, I think it's going to be a really nice addition to this corner. 
and um, don't have uh, an issue necessarily with the variance to the, the height um, and the two-story because I think that the different heights give it a nice a nice visual uh, differentiation in the in the form and yeah I don't necessarily I, I'm kind of neutral on Kevin's comment about the um, the anchor point there um, I don't mind it that way and if it got changed probably would look nice as well um, I don't necessarily have an issue with the parking. I think it's great to be able to uh, utilize this smaller lot to its fullest extent with the building and have lesser surface area sitting as open parking space. So that's, I think that's a, a nice feature to this business and um, a different business concept with the, with the appointments. So you know, I always have these open parking lots sitting empty and the odd person walking around this big parking space. So I like that part of it. Um, and the landscaping is uh, extensive. I won't comment to that too much in detail, but I, I would say um, I appreciate the addition of the, the deck, the rooftop deck. I think that's going to be a really nice feature for clients and staff. Um, uh, but I would maybe suggest, if it's possible, to add some areas of green roof, maybe on the third floor where the mechanical room is. And I was thinking maybe above the um, the lower floor at the front display case, that one-story floor. But um, anyhow, wherever it might lend itself to to work for the project if uh if some green roof could be added that would be probably my only suggestion to consider um yeah i like the fact that you're thinking about the solar that's great and i think that's all i had so thank you very much and thanks angela um kate Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Glenn, Kara, and Mark for your presentation. Um, I'll just, uh, I have a couple of points I just want to emphasize. I, I really appreciate the setting of the building and that you brought it forward to Bowen. Um, I think that's what's help, helping in this area, um, these new builds and putting the parking on the back. Um, so it has a more of a street presence. Um, my only couple of comments or concerns um, Kara, on the Bowen Street side, there's a bit of paving um, where you have two benches and a tree in the middle. And is that really necessary? Um, could you, I'm just looking at one of the views of the building, which is sheet 22 of the package we were sent, um, just one of the renderings. And the three columnar trees along Bowen Road feel so insignificant that it makes me feel sad <laughs> and whereas I almost don't want to see them because they're just so compared to the building and so and also that the scale of that port crochet is so massive it also kind of starts to make those trees feel even less significant so I thought when I'm looking at it if the trees were more dense together just at the uh, like push, if you were walking on Bowen Road, coming towards that port crochet, if they were sort of, if more clustered or grouped, then they would feel a bit, have more mass and more volume and it would, they would balance better with that scale of that building. And I think so, and, and you wouldn't be blocking the views. I understand why you don't want trees on that nice glowy box at the front, but the back side is not quite as much display. So I think you could get away with clustering the trees maybe or, or and reducing a bit of that paving so that then you can have a balance of tree the nice tall columnar trees but maybe to tighter with that big that big uh port i'm not saying this right port kosher <laughs> but there's something funny about that to me it doesn't balance right and 
And so maybe it's like grouping them tighter to create a bigger mass that might work well. Um, and I always struggle with that because I always see these little spindly trees really spaced out and you start to wonder if it's even worth doing. Um, but I really appreciate all the other, the nice that you got in plants where you could. <laughs> and it's maybe it's just sort of that that zone there, I feel like could something could do could better balance off the scale of that port crochet. I was, yeah, I, I mean, just trying to get trees in, right? That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and trying to get trees in and not block the not block the cars. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the, the definitely the go to on I've not my first car dealership. So yeah. definitely the go to. So I, I 100% agree with you. Um, we can, um, we can maybe look at that a little bit more. I think it definitely needs to be a conversation to be had with the client. Um, I, you know, I was just making an effort not to not to block the views. So we, yeah. Yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Yeah, of course. And you could like from my perspective, if, if it might block a bit of the, gla the glazing on that if I think of the building in three portions from the Bowen Road profile, we have the port crochet, then we have the two-story glass block, and then the three-story block. So if you block a bit of that end of the glass, it's okay, because then your the emphasis on the other part, part is even stronger, right? Or that's my thinking. Um, but they're just, and that's my main problem with the whole building is the, that scale of that port crochet and that, that massive wall. So I think even I'm wondering about on the outside of that building where you have the um, the pink flowering dogwood, is that right? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. that maybe even squishing in some columnar trees behind it too, to... Um, that's, yeah. Yeah. That, that maybe, like that's almost, I mean, that species being so narrow would be, that would actually probably be an excellent sort of combination to have them both, fit them both in there, yeah. Yeah, especially because that wall is so dark and, and very simple, the backside, so the, the, then it would be a nice backdrop to your planting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then the dogwoods would be like understory to those really, really tall, narrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that would, that's just my only spot that where I would try to even work harder to get the trees to support the scale of the building. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, I'm happy that you're able to put in a, a swale and have that lush planting. And I don't have any issue with the variances because of the context of the site and, and the adjacent property uses. So I don't see it an issue. Um, and and I don't I think I, I don't mind that the um there was a comment in the staff comments about the um the the garage doors of the maintenance or whatever area. Um possibly considering them having glazing. And I, I, I disagree. I think it, it's a nice contrast and it is the back of house and it makes this nice darker kind of area so that the, the parts you want to see into are, are visible. <laughs> so it's good. Um, and that's all. Yeah. And, and, and if you can give a little attention to that little staff area, it feels a little understated and underwhelming. I know it's just for staff given the, type of car being sold this this the the quality of the building and so maybe that little picnic table feels a little kind of like afterthought as it is um so maybe it even if it has a nice little very del ele elegant little shelter that works with your building or something i'm not sure but it, but you do have that rooftop space so that's great yeah so that's all with just this that kind of thinking about clustering the trees or something closer to that zone. And other than that, I have no other comments. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Kate. And Tony. Nice to be last on this one. Um, uh, just first of all, uh, to get the variances out of the way, I don't have any concerns with them uh, as they were explained uh, either. Um, my four colleagues who just spoke on each took a point that I was going to speak to, so I'm not going to echo them. I'd just like to sort of underline them. The first with Kevin, um, I think this is a stunning piece of architecture for its location. It's going to raise the bar for any other future buildings around it, I hope. I wouldn't change a thing. I like everything about it. Um, Angela's comment about the green roof, um, that was the only thing I was going to suggest as a possible add-on. This looks like a project where money is no object, so I don't see a cost factor being a, um, you know, overwhelming here. But uh, I could be wrong. But uh, uh, that would that's always a nice touch if it's possible. Uh, some some portion of that roof. Um, 
uh, Ken raised the question of the lighting. That's very important too, because it's going to be a real beacon on that corner uh, at night uh, if it's lit up. I don't know what the details are, but uh, obviously some uh, careful thinking um, is needed there. And uh, to, to uh, capitalize on, on the, the design and the location. And then um, Kate's comment, uh, directly or indirectly, was, was raising a query of mine as to you got all this huge wall of glass and you stick three trees in front of it. I, I, I would get rid of them. They, they, for me, they, they seem sort of counterintuitive somehow and you know, move them somewhere else or do whatever you need to. But I, I was just puzzled you know, why you would put uh, trees of any kind uh, in front of that, uh, that feature wall. But hey, you know, I'm not the landscape architect here. Um, so the only point that wasn't mentioned is one that I would like to add, and this is kind of like, uh, kind of like gratuitous, like the icing on the cake, like the green roof, perhaps, and that is the paving. Um, you know, you just look what look like some nice feature paving at the Port Cochere, as it should be, uh, but the rest of the uh, the aisle driveway and all of the parking stalls, if there's an opportunity to consider you know, something a little better, maybe a permeable paver to, uh, you know, help with uh, stormwater mitigation kind of thing, or just for looks or added texture or something like that. Uh, I think that might be something that uh, I, I would suggest could be considered. Otherwise, I think it's fabulous. It's going to really uh, tone the place up, and I can hardly wait to get to a point where I can afford one of these cars. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tony. Well, doesn't leave me a lot to say. I think I, you know, certainly agree with all the all the comments that have been uh, made so far. Um, first of all, I think it's just a really impressive contemporary building that'll make a statement on that corner and serve as a very good anchor. Um, my background is actually art history, so I'm used to looking at a lot of museums. Um, the only thing you're missing, Glenn, is a little a uh, few uh, Frank Gehry swoops, swoops and some titanium there. I think really what you're what you're trying to achieve here uh, for your owners is is a, a kind of a a gallery like display place and I think you've really done that well and I have to again underline Ken's comment about the lighting because I think at night this is going to be quite an impressive building and even during the day I think you're this is what you're doing is creating a gallery literally a gallery or museum for for these cars it's quite different than the other dealerships and that being said I would actually suggest don't park anything in front um, I think it looks, I think that makes all those buildings really look sort of cluttered and, and, uh, and so on. And I think um, just, just the landscaping that Kara's come up with, um, with some adjustments to the trees, as Kate suggested, um, all of that would be, that's more impressive because I think you want to highlight the building and then people look through that and see the cars. That seems to me the, the whole point of the farm and character of this building. It's quite different than the other buildings where they're, not displaying so many outside and everything's outside. So I really like that. And I like, I like the way you've faced it towards the streets and closer to the streets so that, and the parkings in the back. So it's, it, it's taking on a different form and it's going to give a lot of, sh really a great shape to that, that corner. So um, that's really all I, I have to add that's been uh, said. I, I find with the um, variances because I think they, they fit with the purpose of this building, like I say, which is a bit different. So, um, I think they all they're all suitable. So, agree with those. So, Kevin, you had something else you wanted to add? Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. I just wanted to, I just assumed uh, that uh, the program for that corner would be to have those three story at least that part that uh, the three story element with the cars uh, illuminated at nighttime. Um, Glenn, do you happen to know whether or not that's in the program for the building? Uh, I, yeah, I have um, no doubt in my mind that we are going to be strategically um, placing lights to um, to kind of showcase these uh, these vehicles. Um, it's a it's a it's a good exercise in in some of the some of the columns that we have uh, holding up the building uh, are perfect locations for running uh, LED linears vertically that shine into where the cars are sitting, and so you don't get any spill outward. It's all about inward lighting, and and that's where the that, that, that's something that we're definitely going to continue to pursue as we go through the rest of the design development and into uh, into the details of that. Okay, um, so to the panel then, we just need to see what we have here for recommendations. Now, Kevin, you, you have made a few suggestions about the uh, Port Cochere and uh, the 
sort of proportions there. And somebody else mentioned minimize the columns and fewer mullions. I'm not sure if we want to put that in a suggestion. Those are, or those are just discussion points. Um, does anybody want to make those a formal uh, record? Uh, for, well, for me, from my standpoint, I, I just have them just in there, I guess, more of a uh, something for for Glenn to consider, but I don't want to put them in a recommendation unless somebody else wishes to. Um, uh, I think that Port Cushier would need to be fairly well lit with uh, with with uh, uh, LED lights or something because it will be potentially quite dark, especially when it gets on into the the, the winter months. So um, even though it is two stories, um, I think uh, uh, that's something that might be considered whether to to offer offer some transparency through the wall because it, that wall does face south. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think anybody else really jumped in on that. So unless anybody else jumps in and wants to make it a recommendation, I'll just have it as a bug in uh, Glenn's ear for that. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else want to make it a recommendation? Not seeing anything. Okay. Those are off the list. Um, so first recommendation, consider lighting in the interior that'll provide a visual effect at night. Do we want to make that a recommendation? Ken, you suggested that. I think that's... Um, you need your mic on. Your mic's not on, Ken. I just think it's uh, a missed opportunity to really don't pay a lot of attention to lighting. Is that it? And, and someone else brought up, you might like the building. I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> Lighting is really, uh, I know on a, one of the projects I worked on, we had a lighting consultant come in from uh, the U.S. and their ideas are, I mean, a, a good lighting consultant is well, invaluable, especially at, uh, they think of things that we don't know about and, and fixtures and that. So okay. it's more that they're, it's not a recommendation. I think, I think it's more of a guide that maybe they should, uh, it's a talking point and I think we brought it up and I think that the architects now would consider it. We'll go with that, okay. Yeah. And um, okay, so then consider some areas, uh, uh, some some area for a green roof. Okay, consider grouping the trees along Bowen Road, the Bowen Road side of the property, and near some wall. I'm not sure which it was, Kate. You <laughs> mentioned. Oh sure, um, along the uh, the um, is it the south side of the the outside wall of the Port Cochere. Okay, the outside. Is it wall. the south property line? Or I don't south, know. yeah. Yeah. But, so the outside wall of the Port Corsia, that, that would be fine, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, so consider grouping trees along Bowen Road, the Bowen Road, and near the outside of the Port Corsia to create masses that can compete with the scale of the of the building. Does that sound good? Sure, sounds good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and uh, consider uh, doing a. Um, doing a little bit more on how to phrase this, but the staff area in the um, outdoor, the outdoor staff area, consider ways to uh, improve, right? <laughs> to add some elegance to the uh, staff area and uh, consider yeah. better quality paving in keeping with the building. So I'm seeing four, four um, recommendations and consider uh, areas that could be turned into green roofs, uh, consider grouping the trees along Bowen Road and near the outside of the Port Cochere to create masses that can compete with the scale of the building, uh, improve, consider improvements to the staffing area, I'll just leave it like that, and consider a better quality paving in keeping with the, the quality of the building. And that would be it. And then I'm not hearing any um, anybody uh, being uncomfortable with the variances, so I think we can Probably somebody can propose a motion to accept this proposal as presented. Uh, Tony, did you want to? Are you are you making the motion, or are you? Yeah, to I, I would. I would be pleased oh, okay. to uh, okay. move uh, support of this, uh, including the variances, with the suggestions that we're uh, that you've just articulated. Right, for four suggestions with with approval for the with the uh, variances. So, uh, seconder, uh, Ken, and all in favor. Great. It's passed. Thanks, guys. Thanks, uh, Glenn and Kara and uh, one other person. <laughs> and uh, thank you. Thank you. It's great. Thank you very much.
appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we have a second presentation this evening, uh, property on uh, Oliver Road, and Caleb Horn, Horn will present this, uh, introduce this one. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's the uh, second item on tonight's agenda is development permit application number DP1282 at 6201 Oliver Road. Uh, the property is zoned residential corridor uh, and is within the general development permit area uh, design guidelines. The applicant is uh, proposing a six-story multifamily residential building with 35 dwelling units. There are uh, two variances requested as part of this application uh, to increase the maximum building height from 18 meters to 19.36 meters and to reduce the uh, minimum required off-street parking from 45 spaces to 44 spaces. Thank you and uh, yeah, yes, I'll turn awesome, over to yeah. the applicant. Okay, and who's presenting this, this evening? Um, Atta will be presenting. Um, I'll just introduce everybody, I guess, on the team in case somebody doesn't know. Um, okay, so Raymond DeVille will start. Yeah, and Raymond DeVille, and then um, Atta from our office is presenting the project. Great. Um, Kate is doing the landscape architecture, and Mark Warbrook and um, Braden um, are doing civil engineering. So, and Chris Lundy is the, the general contractor developer with the project. So, go ahead, um, Atta. Okay, um, let me share my screen here. Sorry, I forgot to ask if any anybody had questions. No, that's after the presentation, sorry. Hi everyone, um, uh, everyone can see my screen here? Yes. Uh, hi everyone. So I'm Atta, and um, I'll be I'll I'll take you through a short presentation we prepared for 6201 Oliver Road, a multifamily development proposal, as introduced. Um, okay, so the site is characterized as a residential corridor situated at the intersection of Oliver Road and. Upland Drive uh, with close proximity to the Island Highway and also to all the essential amenities within walking distance. Um, this convenience makes it an excellent opportunity to provide an attractive breathing structure and a promote a desirable living addition to the existing neighborhood uh, to a prime promenade. <clears throat> Again, the subject property is a corner lot uh, abutting Uplands Drive and uh, on the northeast and Oliver Road to the south. Looking at the survey plan here, it's uh, a regular shape lot, Not, I guess not surprising since each lot comes with a few challenges and interest uh, for us. The challenging part of this property is the predetermined uh, driveway axis so through those um, easement or shared easement. Uh, also, uh, another challenge to maintain the relationship between the existing site grade mm -hmm. and the grade of the uh, adjacent development to the north. Uh, since we are proposing underground parking or parkade, the height of the north parkade wall need to be limited to a certain height as uh, per bylaws a requirement to consider underground. Those constraining elements situated uh, by the end of the day, the parkade grade levels and the driveway slopes, which eventually set the maximum building height. A bit of uh, site context here. So it's uh, vacant land located on a fairly busy intersection during peak hours. Uh, facing North Town Shopping Center on the opposite side of the property across Oliver Road. Uh, the site is well danced with uh, green coverage, uh, appropriate tree management plan been done and uh, with application when used uh, for, and it was used for proper landscape design. Uh, just to note that a part of this corner is not within the property line. So therefore the proposed uh, site design or the building setting that we will see in the later 
of this uh, presentation will look like as if we push the building a bit further from the intersection to the inner corner to maintain the greenery buffer uh, from the intersection. And to the right of this image, I guess it's, it's um, cropped here. So it's a four story, um, 40 unit uh, residential condominium uh, building. And this is a view from uh, from the property across east of the site is uh, and showing uh, low density residential across the east of the site, uh, townhouses and single residential development across the opposite corner of the property consists of a low density residential as well. Uh, both Oliver Road and Uplands Drive is designated as mobility collector. Uh, details of the street section is yet to be addressed during the engineering review. The site is fairly sloped. Uh, so as you can see from the left to the right of the image, um, it's gradually uh, sloping downhill uh, towards the intersection uh, at the right of this image by approximately um, three meters. From the west to the uh, from the west to east, and from south to north of the intersection, and this is an existing easement uh, for the shared access drive aisle of uh, off of uh, Oliver Road. To the left of this image uh, is a four-story, 110-unit senior resident origin at Longwood, which why this de development will create. Uh, we believe a transition between the adjacent residential properties to the north and west. And this is, uh, this is an image of the driveway connection uh, from the easement to the property that to be provided through the existing area, existing garbage area that's, uh, that is shown in this image. Having, having all the parking underground is a perfect visual um, a screening from uh, for the park uh, for the parking from the street, the access to the parkade through the existing easement. Uh, the idea is to leave as much common area as possible and create a warm pedestrian um, use. Uh, the common pedestrian path provided to connect the the main building uh, entrances to the secondary. Um, and ground unit access. This this path is provided with the shading device trellises and connected to a common seating area uh, to the southwest of the property as well. Um, landscape surrounding uh, to this common area to have a sense of greenery enclosure and mitigate traffic noise more and more detail, I guess, for this um, Landscape, uh, landscaping space uh, works and how it works will be explained in the landscape presentation. And part of the idea of the massing and how the massing is setting on the site is to respect the views from the neighboring sites without, or from the site to the, uh, to the neighboring sites without compromising the pri uh, privacy uh, or raising the privacy concerns. So the massing concept is generated through a multiple sam uh, simple stacked volume to highlight depth and exposure to di different parts of the functional spaces behind it where it's needed the design differentiates the base of the building with the distinguished material color um, from the rest of the building to establish the massing weight and the top floor is uh, complemented with overhang canopies supported by um, exposed uh, exposed wooden structure to reflect West Coast architectural language overall. The depth of the facade has been stated with different levels and differentiated with different contrasted color materials and basically elaborated by um, projected balconies uh, on each side. And we also considered uh, a uh, homogeneous, uh, uh, simple yet interesting facade treatment, which helps in longevity of the project in terms of maintenance and durability of the overall structure um, uh, of the building. The design also considered a most 
or more substantial design treatment to the corner of the building um, at the north facade to state a clear presence by uh, varying the height of uh, different profiles, a uh, height of different uh, roof lines uh, along and around this corner unit and it's extruded uh, and, and having an extruded deck facing upland drive. Um, this corner is a, and the entire corner is a single unit. So carefully um, consideration, uh, consider having decks where it's uh, necessary and functional. The size and number of these decks and balconies is determined by the usability and the functional aspect of it. Uh, since they are, uh, they only serve uh, to that to those single units. The northeast elevation follows similar language and the continuity of the language to the to have a consistent design aesthetic. Further to this um, to the staff comment, uh, we expanded the use of pearl gray siding to the north elevation to contain the use of the wood-like finish um, at the at the corner. Uh, the exposure of the retaining wall as well is mitigated by incorporating cascading plants to minimize the visual impact and make it more interesting and create more of a nat natural decorative element. The north ground units also provided with private patios. Uh, these patios are screened um, from the neighboring sites by either fritted or frosted glass guards and with adequate landscaping, a landscaping uh, buffer. Uh, the continuity of the private patios uh, that wraps around the corner to create a roof over the garbage, um, garbage room and a green uh, green roof overhang over the parquet, parkade axis. The refuse receptacle room is completely enclosed to minimize potential impact on the resident and to the neighbors um, to adopt the staff, a staff comment. Our intention in the site design is also to save the existing trees as much as possible, since it's very highly dense uh, uh, green coverage. At the northeast and southwest, especially of the property, they also functions as a buffer and sort of a sort of privacy to the ground units and also the to the top units. Attractive common space for the tenants provided to enjoy. Um, seating benches and shading devices and trees will make a great use of these spaces for socializing. In addition to the semi-private ground common space, a private amenity space provided for the tenant on the rooftop, uh, which will uh, include a indoor facility, outdoor or indoor outdoor seating areas and partially uh, green roof and barbecue area that will have views to both sides of um, the amenities, a space to the east and west um, to catch both the sunrise and sunset. This is an isometric image uh, showing uh, north elevation as well as the uh, hint of the amenity room on the roof. On this, I mean, one of the strongest elements of the facade, obviously, is the fin walls, that which uh, are not only providing an aesthetic design element, but also works as a privacy screen or privacy blocking from overlooking to the adjacent units. Um, as shown, the strong presence of the fin walls extruded from the underneath of the overhang roof to the uh, down to the ground le uh, ground level, contrasted with the horizontal siding to tone down the verticality of the building mass. The main entrance, uh, or the main entrance, uh, green roof canopy is designed to follow the or continue to follow the architectural theme of the development, and 
additional green roof canopy is also provided uh, for the temporary bicycle space adjacent to the main entry. Uh, the seating area is also provided uh, within this shaded area for convenient purposes or convenient to use. The parkade included the required bicycle space and additional electric scooter um, space part of the tier one to achieve higher densities provided within uh, this uh, room or storage. Um, And this is the site and ground level layout uh, showing in detail the building footprint, um, driveways and common areas in relation to uh, the ground units. And further discussion we had with the city before, um, which created our variance for the uh, number of parking or the shortage of the parking to eliminate additional parking or not additional to, instead of meeting the minimum requirement of the parking uh, we propose the parking at this location but to save as much as tree as possible um, we had a discussion to take out this space and provide more green space uh, for the tenant to use so we're pr proposing here a mix of 35 units mixed between one bedroom and two bedroom units plus uh, roof uh, top amenity space. And this is a typical layout from second to fifth floor. Detail, th this is this is the um, roof uh, amenity space and, uh, and will be explained further in landscape presentation, how it's landscaped and uh, exterior and, uh, at, at both sides of the Amenity space. There's more of a detail to to the elevation of the facade. Again, showing the incorporated color scheme of the soft natural tone, contrasted and blended with the surrounding landscape elements. Um, building material has been selected uh, to give a predominantly uh, low maintenance exterior with some uh, wood accent. Um, to give warmth and welcome um, for every season. The scheme of this building can be summarized as a modern architecture uh, while uh, incorporating distinctly regional element of West Coast contemporary aesthetic. And these uh, are the East and West elevations. The bottom uh, West elevation emphasizes how the surface parking is sunk and totally screened from the street or further screened from the uh, from the street the elevation also illustrate how the planting uh, plantation fronting the building provides a buffer to the unit from the street i guess this is uh, our architecture part i can let the landscape uh, explain the rest of the landscape presentation yeah chris is going to talk i guess with who works with kate so go ahead okay thank you um sh may i okay you're going to uh i'll i'll is that at uh that's navigating yes. yeah yeah thank you so thank you for having us i my name is chris midley i work with kate stefuk uh, at kinship design art ecology kate obviously recusing herself so i will uh describe the landscape for this particular project. And Atta, you, you might as well go to the next slide, L102. There, we'll hover here for a little while. So uh, Atta did an excellent job at orienting um, uh, the panel to the site. And one of the takeaways from that um, view of the site uh, is the presence of existing trees, obviously. And so as a, as a green field kind of treed site, that really provided us with the inspiration for our approach to the landscape here, reflecting on the coastal Douglas fir ecosystem that is unique to our er area uh, and trying to reestablish a healthy uh, urban tree canopy and, and urban ecosystem through the process of development, uh, producing a a biodiverse, climate resilient uh, landscape that allows people to uh, people and natural si people and natural systems to thrive together. So the the concept that we applied to this particular 
project was this idea of a regenerative city, the regener a regenerative city scenario, um, which uses landscape to, re to respond to impacts of climate change and the needs of natural systems, as well as the comfort and well-being of residents. Um, so looking at the plan itself, the palette uh, will rely on indigenous plantings uh, layered uh, with complementary ornamental species where appropriate um, in order to replicate urban systems in the natural environment. Uh, the, the plant species that we have selected, and we can touch on that if you need to, uh, but they're generally selected to be drought tolerant as well as uh, any other um, the species that'll thrive in an, in an urban area. Uh, as well as attracting uh, biodiversity and particularly pollinators. Um, they are, these planted areas that, that surround the building also uh, play a functional role in the, uh, in the urban system by absorbing rainwater and, and, and slowing the flow of rainwater down through uh, green infrastructure and a rain garden. Uh, and the materials that we've selected also evocative of the local environment with warmth of wood and, and paper stones. So this particular plan uh, features some of the design elements that we are uh, employing to realize uh, that, that vision. So just walking through them, you can, can, I'm hopeful that you can see my mouse on the screen here. Um, is, is it visible? I'm, I'm sort of floating it around. If not, that's okay, I'll, I'll just verbalize. You can see the numbers. Uh, we'll just run through the list on the right and, and point to, and, and correlate those to the, the spots on the site. So the first design feature, uh, I think you heard Atta speaking about it as well, uh, the Arbor Walk. It's a simple steel, uh, it's at the number one, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's at the, uh, it's a sort of a simple steel and timber structure. Um, that moderates the scale of the architecture. Uh, so it provides a, a essentially a visual drop from the architecture to the street, um, while also creating an additional buffer and privacy for those patios and private spaces immediately adjacent to the building. So it, it creates essentially um, a, a, a sense of separation between what is private space and what is more public common space, and then further to the street itself. Uh, between the, the Arbor Walk and the uh, Oliver Road Street, um, there is a proposed common sitting area, number two. Yeah, thank you. Um, and that's, uh, that, that, again, is an intermediate space between the street and the, and, the, and the private life of the building, where people can have a relationship to Oliver Road and the existing sidewalk, but also feel immersed in a, in a, in a, in a lush, uh, and the thriving landscape. Um, so that takes us to number three, the pollinator garden. Uh, this we envision as a, 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 hopefully achieve it as a visually stunning element uh, of perennials um, <clears throat> and essentially lower level plants that uh, sort of envelop and immerse that common sitting area. You can see along the grass boulevard immediately below the pollinator uh, garden, there's a gap between the trees and that is uh, intended to allow a visual sort of penetration into the site at this particularly what we hope is a, a visually interesting, colorful profusion of flowers and buzzing, thriving, living system. Um, as Indicated previously, uh, going on now to number four, the forest garden idea, you can see that both where Atta has circled at the southwest of the parcel as well as the northeast. So this is building on the, the, the existing trees that are on the site and uh, encouraging additional trees uh, there to really sort of anchor the building into the landscape on, on the, the, the e each side. Also providing a visual buffer to things like the driveways, um, and, and sort of the, the privacy of the patios on that uh, east side of the building. So there's a, a forest garden there. Uh, we would also, in addition to a, a fairly generous planting of trees, we would have a, a, a lush understory as well. Um, <clears throat> so again, your, your, your standard sort of coastal Douglas fir understory species. Mm -hmm. So the number five is a rain garden. I, I hinted at sort of this 
converging of urban systems, human systems, landscape, and ecology. So this is sort of manifests as a, as a rain garden. Um, it's necessary in order to meet the stormwater requirements for development of the site, but it's also an opportunity to, again, achieve a very healthy, thriving, uh, living landscape that really does create a, a feeling of immersion around those patio spaces. So making those uh, residents feel like they're really situated in, a, in, a, in a, a healthy, thriving, natural environment. So Atta, if you don't mind moving on to uh, L1.04. Yes, uh, so thank you, <laughs> you're faster than me. Uh, so this, uh, the purpose of this illustration is just to uh, emphasize that the sixth item, uh, the sixth design feature are these rooftop gardens. Uh, so there's green roofs as as hinted uh, over the main entry and into the entry into the driveway or the underground parkade. But there's also an amenity room proposed for the uh, rooftop of the building. Um, as you can see here with a, a small deck, it's sort of, sort of the amenity room essentially bisects the roof into two usable halves where there's a, a deck on either side. Um, and that deck is then bounded by uh, another green roof, uh, each side having a small little con concrete paver path that allows the, the user to sort of, sort of wander out to the edge, if you will, and uh, sort of enjoy uh, a green component of that, of that space. Um, as hinted at, or as, as explained quite clearly previously, the, the overall site, now this is not speaking about green roofs specifically, but more generally of the site itself, it is a structure on parkades. So that's why you see all the trees kind of pushed out to the periphery of the site and uh, sort of the lower sort of ground cover and shrubs sort of centrally located. And um, also to accommodate the generous plantings that we have, there are raised planters sort of immediately adjacent to those patio spaces. Again, allowing for uh, higher um, plants, shrubs, that sort of thing, uh, but also that privacy buffer as well. So with that, I, I don't wanna to take too much of your time. I'll, I'll leave it to questions rather than elaborate too far. And um, please feel free to post questions when you're ready. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I don't know, is there a couple of comments you wish to make, Braden, just in terms of the civil aspects? Not really. It's just, this is Mark here. Um, everything drains to the northwest corner on this one, so that's where we put the bulk of our storage, aside from what will what will be located beneath the rain garden. So there's an area of uh, grass grid, so it's basically fully permeable parking, and beneath that we're putting proposing a... Uh, a stormwater detention chamber to uh, allow the water to from the entire site to either infiltrate the ground or be stored prior to discharge. Um, given the fact that the surface parking is grassed and the bulk of the other or the rest of the remainder of the parking is underground, we don't have to treat the uh, we don't have to treat the, uh, the the parking lot runoff outside. There there will be an all water separator beneath the building. Uh, for the stuff that comes off the inside parking, but uh, the the surface parking outside is going through grass and growing medium, so it'll be filtered before it gets into the storm system. So um, that's pretty much it for for our end. Okay. Okay. Should we move on to the panel, or did you have anything else to add there, Raymond? Um, other than it's a very small, tight site and um, very irregular site, and we're fixed as to where we could come in. Um, the site's naturally, I think, in a depression, maybe not hard unless you've been to the site to look at. So the boulevards are actually a little bit higher. I think it was important for us to remove actually where we had two parking stalls near where the trees were to keep the vegetation to come onto our site compared to origin to kind of bring that um, aspect back in. And uh, I think the whole idea with the because it's a very public space in terms of two frontages and exposed on the third side that we wanted to have an amenity up on the roof and we wanted to make it hidden so it didn't create privacy issues or anything for the neighbors. So I think those are kind of a couple of the key concepts as well. Yeah. Go ahead. Thanks. We have I, I'm 
stop sharing. Oh, sorry, did you have something to add, Ada? I uh, just want to add one um, uh, in, to include uh, one uh, another point to the variances. I just discussed it with uh, with Caleb today, and we just don't want to hide anything or don't want to assume that we are hiding anything. So we uh, missed out to add a landscape buffer uh, uh, request of uh, 0.91 uh, meter of uh, of 1.8 instead of 1.8 meters along the north edge of the site. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I want to add. Great. Okay. Uh, if you could stop sharing your screen, thank you. And uh, does any do any of the panel members have any questions for staff on this project? Okay, I don't see any, so maybe we can go ahead. Uh, maybe Tony, since you were last last time, we'll let you go at it first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks for the presentation. Um, first of all, uh, I don't have a problem with the requested variances. I think they're all relatively minor and, uh, and quite acceptable uh, in the context. Um, as far as the form and character are, is con are concerned, uh, I, I think it's a very handsome looking building and uh, I don't really have anything that uh, I would uh, um, uh, have any difficulties with. I like the uh, the degree of uh, articulation and the massing vertically and horizontally. I think it's very successful the way it steps uh, back and forth as well as up and down. I like the mix of the materials and the colors and the little extra touches of the, the natural wood features here and there for accents. So in terms of the architecture, uh, I think it's uh, it's very well done. And I don't usually comment on landscaping, <laughs> but here I have to. I, I think this is one of the most delightful, uh, thoughtful um, landscape designs that certainly I've seen in, in quite a while. And the main reason for that, well, two reasons. One is a lot of those existing trees to, you know, to help out. Um, but mostly what I really liked about it was that the sort of the, the different zones, each with its own distinct character and qualities and just the whole variety of that, uh, I, I found uh, the, the very, very um, creative and uh, very, very pleasing. Um, um, so um, I guess I just wanted to, uh, to um, express that uh, even not just on the ground, but even going up to the, to the roof with the green roofs and the decks and so, stuff like that. So there's a, a really rich variety of uh, outdoor spaces here. And I really commend the thought that went into that. And uh, so very well done there. And the only small question I would have in that regard though, and maybe I missed it in the presentation or, or whatever, but uh, I, I, I don't recall anything about uh, any opportunities for uh, the residents to you know grow food or anything like that. I don't know if there are any planters or little garden plots or anything of that nature. So I, I guess I would ask the question, is, is that part of this? And if not, could it be? I'll let Chris answer, I guess. Okay, I, I, thank you. I, I can I can take a stab at an answer. Uh, uh, so there, there, there's options. Uh, so at the ground level, I suppose, uh, there are raised planters surrounding some of those patios. And if, if the residents who, who live there decided that that's how they wanted to utilize that space then i suppose that that would be their prerogative uh strata rules notwithstanding i guess um the other option i suppose and and uh, it would be if there's options on on that rooftop area uh for some some planters or, or community style uh beds so i think that could be something for the the residents to negotiate or we could potentially alloc uh, allocate that as a note uh, if that's required for the, for the panel. Yeah. Funnily, funnily enough, that's exactly the answer I gave to a question at a community meeting on one of my projects. Uh, really, it's up to the residents. Sometimes you put all these planters and stuff in and nobody uses them. They're not successful. Other times, you know, people really want them. So really, you're right. It's up to the, the people once they move in that they decide what they want to do with their space. And you have the opportunity there to uh, to do a, a whole variety of things. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Excellent project. And uh, I'll uh, turn it back to the chair. Great. Thanks, Tony. Angela? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, like Tony, um, I feel like the form and character is done very well. It's going to enhance the character and fits well within the neighborhood. Um, at first, I was thinking maybe there could be sort of an enhancement of the, 
the entryway, but um, after um, Chris's presentation, I, I realized that this is a residential lot. It's a highly constrained residential lot, and um, there's only so much you can do, but it's um, the landscaping is doing is providing that differentiation between the uh, commercial properties across the way. Cause I was sort of thinking there's that whole plaza feeling across the street at the commercial uh, node, but this is residential. So it's really um, in keeping with the residential and, sh and not trying to be something it's, it's not. So um, really like the, the landscaping um, plan and uh, thoughtfulness that went into the different areas um, I like there's that the stormwater management plan is going to be a nice water feature there near the entrance. Um, that will be very nice for the user. And um, yeah, I like that there was all the green roof areas wherever you could fit them and the community amenity space. Um, very well done. So I didn't actually have anything to add. So thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Angela. And Ken? Oh, uh, no, thank you for the presentation. <laughs> thank you for the presentation. I, uh, I like the overall siting and how you took advantage of the site and how the, you managed to get the parking to work out quite nicely. Um, I really like the, the roof amenity that you put in and uh, certainly like the, uh, the one big unit you have at the end. It's, it's a nice uh, feature for somebody to uh, live in that unit. Um, as well as form and character, I think it's similar to and, and to all the newer uh, walk-ups around this area, uh, certainly on Uplands and on, along the Island Highway. There's a few of these buildings around. And it, it's very uh, comparable to those in, in terms of uh, form and shape and, and uh, articulation. Um, the only question I had was uh, the siding. And I, I don't know if it's possible, but why wasn't the building moved a couple of feet south so that the north side residents facing north, looking into a parking lot would look more into uh, more landscaping than into the parking lot of the neighboring building. That was my concern because I, I can see there is a great separation and, and maybe a, a couple more feet of uh, planting space would allow you to put in bigger trees or something uh, in terms of landscaping to shield those uh, people who are, are living on that side of the building. Uh, some uh, more green space or <clears throat> green weed that they can look at. Other than that, um, to me, because I don't think you would lose that much on the south side in terms of you lost uh, two or three feet of landscaping on that side. So that was my only question and I leave it up to the architect to maybe respond on why they squeeze it too tightly to the north and not give people in the north a little more landscaping. That was my okay. only negative. I can comment on it and I can comment on it too. Um, basically, the, the site's full of a underground parkade. So the parkade goes basically right to the property line almost there. So um, there's not a lot of room to move it. And then we had to deal with the stormwater management stuff so that we had enough room to deal with all the water coming off of the parkade within our property boundary because it looks the property looks bigger than what it is. It's not mm -hmm. the boulevard is wider than quite wide, so it's deceiving that way, so, yeah. Okay. Yep. That was my only comment. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Um, okay, and uh, finally, Kevin. Thanks, Madam Chair, and uh, thank Raymond. Thank you, Raymond, and your team for a very nice presentation. Um, I support uh, both the variances. I have no issues with those. Um, I think uh, you did very well with the siting of the building and how it relates to the uh, to the streets as well as the north elevation, which uh, a lot of people wouldn't put a lot of emphasis on because normally it's fairly hidden. Uh, this 
building is not hidden. And I think you've done well to articulate that elevation, uh, not only with how you establish your footprint of the building, but also through the use of materials. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with Kane's comment about the uh, moving the building. Um, uh, I don't really, uh, I can go either way on that, but it is a very good comment. Um, so I'll let everybody else decide whether or not they can feel that it, even just a couple of feet might provide a little bit more uh, area for the, uh, uh, the people that are living on the north elevation to get a little bit more uh, uh, deck space and possibly patio space as well. Um, form and character, I think uh, Raymond and Atta, you did a, a very good job with the, 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 the building with use of materials. I really don't have any issues with that. Uh, city staff had uh, recommended or commented on the northeast corner of the building um, because that would be obviously visible uh, as you come down Uplands Drive from the, from the north. Um, I don't really, I looked at it and I couldn't really come up with a solution uh, and I wouldn't want to give you or recommend a solution otherwise, but I think um, I'm, I'm happy with the, the northeast corner the way it is. Uh, I, I was going to ask you about that, but I decided to decline doing that. Uh, I like the roof amenity space and patio. Uh, the only concern I have with the form and character is an inter internal thing. Um, and I know a lot of people that both uh, rent uh, apartments, uh, uh, new ones especially, and also people that own uh, condominiums. And if they have one complaint, the one I hear the most often is there's not enough storage for the actual units. And obviously the bike storage is obviously something that we've uh, endorsed uh, heavily over the years. But uh, I know some of the units, when I look at the floor plans, do have um, uh, uh, a little bit extra closet space, uh, especially some of the two stories. But I know people that live in one bedroom ones that say there's not enough interior storage in the units. So I would have no issues. Uh, I'm not going to put it in, in his recommendation. I'm just putting it uh, as a bug in your ear, Raymond, and at a, uh, about the uh, about the uh, uh, storage that's needed for a lot of these people that live in these units. And I would, if if anybody else is interested, I would even support. Uh, a parking variance uh, to provide some uh, storage space for these units. Uh, I'm just finding more and more that people are mentioning that, that trying to find storage is very difficult. Uh, so that's it for form and character. Landscape concept, uh, concept I think uh, uh, Chris and Kate, you did a, a fantastic job with it. Um, I like uh, how you've uh, uh, retained a lot of the existing trees on the site. Uh, the the non-formal uh, I guess the uh, areas that uh, that have the existing trees and how you kept them non-linear and then trans, um, I guess, uh, transferred into the, uh, through the arbor area into more linear uh, landscape areas around the patios. I think that works very, very uh, well. Um, I like how you've incorporated green roofs. Um, uh, only two items. I think it shows up on some of the 3D modeling, but uh, Chris, I think you are going to be providing either cascading plants or climbers along the retaining walls. Is that correct? You're muted. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, we, we can absolutely, we, we heard that and we can, we can ensure that, um, that that's incorporated in the planting plan. At the okay. Okay, so, but that, uh, yeah, I, I would put that in as a recommendation because I don't believe uh, you would address that at all uh, with city comments. So I would like to see that as a recommendation. Um, the, um, just want to get everything here. Um, is the, the, in your landscape concept, Chris, um, you uh, identify the rain garden and is there going to be any transparency from the covered entrance or the covered entry walkway so that people will be able to see that you're going to make that uh, stream stone or, or, or something like that in there. Is that correct? But it's going to be a, a, a it could be a feature as you walk in. Uh, well, we would certainly hope that would function that way as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So um I'd have to look at the architecture specifically to see what that edge looks like. Um, yeah. But uh, but our intent is to make it a 
uh, uh, an attractive site. If there's if there's a need for um, sort of that rock at the base of it, I, I'm not certain if that's necessary. That we can certainly coordinate with on the civil side. I, I think a, a planted uh, um, rain garden is is equally attractive, if not more so. And so whatever whatever. Uh, again, I think that's. I think that our intent would make it a, a visually sort of present, um, enjoyable element on the site and and planted to the extent that we can in coordination largely with on the civil side, if there's any requirements to make it function well. Uh, but failing that, I would I would see it as a predominantly a planted feature that has ephemeral water uh, gathering. Yeah. Yeah, I would then recommend that if you are going to make it uh, a feature as you walk in that that you do have low level uh, shrubs between the rain garden and the the walkway to make sure that it is visible because I think you have the opportunity there to do something really special. Um, the only other thing is the roof deck. Uh, what what plantings are you going to put on the roof deck where the amongst the pavings is it going, they're going to be drought drought resistant plantings. Oh, sorry, I, sorry about that. <laughs> um, the typical sort of green roof palette, predominantly sedum. I think on the on the first page of your package, if you've got, or the second page, there's a precedent image that starts to zero in on what some of those green roof uh, plantings would be. Fairly standard green roof planting, um, and uh, often that would be a sort of a sedum mix, really. Uh, so, okay, so they're 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 not going to be irrigated. They're going to be drought resistant, pretty much, or. Um, I, they will be, the sedum are very drought resistant. Uh, the, the extent that they would require some watering, I, I suspect that that would be the case. So, so that, that's something that would be incorporated into the, the, the architecture and, and I mean, to ensure that there's ready, ready whether or not it's specifically irrigated or, or hand managed, but typically uh, they would be managed as green roofs are typically, uh, dealt with, uh, whether okay. it's an automated system or, or otherwise. Yeah. It w did you consider possibly a couple of pots up there with uh, small deciduous trees? Uh, we didn't consider trees up there. No. Uh, so I think there's, there's, it's too, it's too hot typically on top of a roof okay. to help, help the trees very exposed, very windy. Um, okay. And I mean, again, balancing just a, a space for people to occupy potential for smaller level potted sort of plants and, uh, vegetables, perhaps. I mean, if 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 we go down that path as well, but no, we didn't didn't think of tree didn't didn't think trees would be successful up there. Okay, okay, thanks. Um, aside from that, I think you have a a, a very nice extensive palette of of uh, different uh, species, and I think it's going to work very well. And just to echo uh, uh, Tony's comment, is uh, I think this is 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 as nice as we normally see for for presentations for landscape concepts. So. Very well done. And Raymond, again, thank you very much. Nice project. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Kevin. So I guess I'll just finish up here. I'm, uh, I agree with, I would echo all the comments that have already been made. Um, great project. I think it'll fit really well into the corner. When I first looked at it the for with the foreman character and the first plans we received, I thought it's a pretty dull <laughs> and boring building. And I read the staff's comments and um, Ada, I, I really recognize that. I think you really, the changes you did make since then, I, like I see that you've done some changes, it's, it's really helped um, spark that building up. And I understand why you don't want it too obvious because you're also, you've got the trees around it and so on. And that's great. I, I, one suggestion I would have is that it could use a little spark of color, like maybe on the, um, on the uh, numbers or the name of the building over the door, just something like that would just give it a little bit of punch um red or something just a uh and that would also help highlight your door a little bit so that would be just my one suggestion on the form and character in that sense um the other thing i liked about this project is that this is a great area for people with mobility issues um and i think you've tried to accommodate that you've got the, the parking spot down down in the garage for some carts and so on um but i'm also wondering if you're carrying that through through the whole building um for example can somebody is is the roof garden going to be fully accessible to somebody who's in a wheeled uh, type of um, either wheelchair or a cart? 
um, also in the units themselves, they look quite small. And I often look at these and I think, well, okay, yeah, we've got people here with mobility issues, but can they get in and out of the bathroom and up and down off the toilet properly? Um, are those sort of universal design principles being used in some of these buildings? But I understand for developers, that's always an issue because um, do you design all the buildings and then they don't really suit some people with disabilities or their particular needs? And um, I read an article fairly recently about a developer, I think in Vancouver, who was actually working with people as they bought into these condos, especially when they're, they're bought this way and designing them for them specifically, making sure that they can accommodate their, their needs. So it's just, just a thought. I can't make it as a suggestion. I don't really think it's our purview to do that, but I think you've got an opportunity here with this building to really, and especially with the seniors residents right across the way, which is all again very accessible with sidewalks and so on and they they actually have um activities and functions in there that where they invite the public in um can join into some talks and different activities in there so um, i think this would be a very appealing building for somebody with those issues because they can shop they can do all those things from there so just a thought uh, make sure that, that that it is um, accessible all the way around and speaking of that, I think Chris um, really loved the garden design. Um, the one, the one thing that popped up, you were, I think, it was in the, maybe it's in the rain garden. You're putting mulch um, on the paths. It was some, I can't remember which part of the it was, but I thought that would be very difficult for somebody who's got uh, mobility issues to move on, and probably more of a pebbled or graveled path would be more suitable. I know you're probably looking at something as porous. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, uh, so it's it's actually over by the common sitting area, so not, not adjacent, so, so other other side of the that southern right. so side of the parcel. But yes, we we it's a fairly standard path material that we would specify very permeable, very natural feeling, very suitable for fitting between existing trees without having to sort of excavate at a sub base or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I suppose the uh, the accessibility component of that may be uh, uh, less success accessible than a, a, a more conventional path. Uh, if if that's a recommendation, we'll consider that. I I, I think it'll largely um, so we don't want to compromise the integrity of the trees in that particular area, and so that's one of the sort of one of the reasons for a, a mulch path in there. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure what to say there, <laughs> but I think, yeah, wherever possible, it is great. I think it's important to sort of make sure that people with those issues are, are accommodated and able to enjoy the whole property in essence. So, um, okay. Well, thank you very much. That was a good, good project. Look forward to seeing it. Um, let's just do a little roundup here and see what we have for recommendations. Um, I didn't hear too many other than Kevin. I think you mentioned a couple. Are there some that you feel that we need to? Um, the only one, like the, the storage for units, that, that's an internal part of the building. Um, I uh, I've always felt that we shouldn't really de be dealing with uh, uh, areas of the project that aren't uh, public in nature as far as viewing a building. So being that it's internal, I just wanted to put that out there uh, for Raymond and other uh, architects and designers to uh, possibly consider that in the future that it is something I'm hearing from people um, so that one uh, I'm not worried about that one it, it's uh, the only one and it's very minor uh, that I mentioned to Chris about uh, trying to make sure that the, the rain garden is a feature and, and is visible and and transparent transparent through the other uh, landscape uh, materials that are there Okay, so make, consider making the rain garden, garden a feature that is visible through the other yeah. landscape elements. Yeah, or just ensure that the rain garden is a feature, a feature element or a feature. Oh, okay. And it, to be a feature would have to be uh, viewed from the, from, other, from the walkway or other areas of the site. Okay, and then you mentioned also climbing plants on the retaining walls. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I, uh, climbing or cascading plants on the retaining walls. And uh, plantings on the roof deck, did you want to say anything about that? Uh, no, no, uh, uh, Chris's rationale uh, regarding that uh, was, is totally fine. Okay, and um, I would like to add, uh, consider uh, 
element of color, small element of color in the, on the facade. And consider a hard pack uh, path where possible for better, mobi for better mobility. So I'll leave that where possible because I understand your limitations there if you're trying to uh, maintain the trees as well, Chris. Okay. And uh, any other can, uh, recommendations from anybody? Okay. And how is everybody on the on the uh, different variances? I think everybody was okay with that. Okay. Thumbs up over there. All right. Um, so we have four recommendations. Consider climbing or cascading plants on the retaining walls. Consider the rain garden as a feature uh, in the landscape plan and consider a small element of color on the facade and consider a hard pack path in the landscapes where possible. So can I have a motion to accept the uh, proposal uh, with those four recommendations and approval of the uh, uh, variances? So Kevin is making that. Yeah, I would make a motion to accept the application as presented with support for the variances uh, and with those four recommendations. Great. Okay, and a seconder, uh, Ken, and all in favor? Great. Thanks very much for your presentation, everybody. It's excellent. Thank you. Okay, we've got one more order of business before we go away. Kate has to come back on for a few minutes. Hey, thank you, everybody. I will. I will disappear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> go make dinner. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Okay. So our last order of business tonight, um, I'm going to be away at our, on our next meeting, October 12th, I believe it is. Look at my calendar. So we need an, we need somebody to take over the chair position. Sorry, it's the 13th. I'm, I'm not volunteering because unfortunately I'm also away for our next meeting. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know <laughs> if that will affect our quorum, never mind a chair. I don't know. And then, Kate, do you have a presentation next time? Do you know? Uh, not that I know of, but I would volunteer, but I do have an unclarified conflict. It's our, the, our British Columbia Association of Landscape Architectural Annual Meeting, and I just don't know if I'm going yet. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, but speaking of that, actually, no, it won't be an issue. I wouldn't be going till Friday. So it's not an issue. If I do go, it won't be till Friday. Okay. So do you so, want, do you want to step forward as the. Sure. I'd be happy to be here for the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. So, uh, do we need to vote her in? Anybody want to make a motion to make Kate the chair? <laughs> I don't know if we need it. Ken, <laughs> Ken makes the motion. Tony seconds. All in favor. Kevin's, Kevin's sitting there. Thank God I didn't ask me. <laughs> okay, so uh, if we're done then, can we have a motion to adjourn? Ke Kevin's giving the motion. Tony's seconding. We're all in favor. Great. Good night, guys. Thanks for all your work. We'll see you um, 